So I'm going to start my presentation now. Uh, my name is Peter Bengtsen. Uh, I'm an art historian and sociologist. I'm located at, at Lund University. This presentation uh, departs from two main places. Um, as some of you may remember, uh, last year uh, at, at the Lisbon conference, I screened a 26-minute uh, video called Tracing Kegger, in which I followed a trail of tags by the Danish graffiti writer Kegger uh, at the outskirts uh, of Malmö. And in addition to showing my physical walk in this video, through overlays in the video, I also attempted to communicate the process of recollecting previously found tags uh, by Kegger and Malmö, as well as other uh, tags and phrasings that I've seen in conjunction with Kegger's tag, either in person, uh, in printed publications, or in social media posts. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll just I'll post a link uh, a link to uh, to the video uh, that I presented last year. I'll post that in the chat so that you can have a look at it uh, at your leisure. Um, don't have to do it right now. I also wanted to point out I have um, written since since last year's uh, conference. I wrote a short article about the video and about uh, using video as a method. Uh, and I'm posting a link to that as well. So you can have a look at that when you, when you feel like it, if you feel like it. Um, so as it's going to become clear, um, my experimentations with videography generally and uh, the Tracing Kegger video in particular are central points of departure for uh, what I'm going to be presenting today. Another point of departure is uh, an experience that took place uh, during a panel discussion that was co-arranged by Urban Creativity Lund, the research network that I'm uh, co-organizing. Uh, it was a panel discussion that took place in, in Malmö in Sweden in uh, March 2019, so uh, a little over a year ago. And by way of background, uh, as a scholar, I've mainly been focused on street art However, I've been documenting graffiti photographically uh, for some years now. And since 2013, I've also been posting these photos on Instagram. Um, and similar to the experience that is described by uh, Eric Hannatz, my colleague from Urban Creativity Lund, uh, in a 2016 article that is called Scrolling Down the Line, I, which was published in, uh, the, uh, in uh, the Street Art and Urban Creativity Journal, uh, I have found that photographing and posting images of graffiti on Instagram has provided me with uh, sort of a subcultural identity in the graffiti world of Malmö. Not as a graffiti writer, since I don't write graffiti, but more as what uh, Jakob Kimball and, and others have, have called uh, a chronicler. Now, during this panel discussion that I mentioned in March 2019, I, uh, at the last minute, was added to the panel because somebody uh, dropped out. And during the discussion, which was mainly about, uh, it was about graffiti and street art in the Ursons region, so the Copenhagen area and the Malmö area, basically. Um, during that discussion, I asked the rest of the panel where chroniclers such as myself stand in the hierarchy of the graffiti world. And I was promptly and in no uncertain terms told by another panelist, a Danish graffiti writer who's based in Sweden, uh, that documentarians or chroniclers like me are lowest in the hierarchy of the graffiti world. Um, and now I'm not sure if this is actually true, uh, but the audience at the panel discussion, which to a large degree consisted of local graffiti writers, seemed to agree uh, very loudly. Uh, so, so I think that there may be some truth to it. And this experience uh, of, of sort of being put in my place uh, within the hierarchy of the graffiti world in, in Malmö is the other main point of departure uh, for today's talk. So as I also made clear last year, uh, the Tracing Kegger, Kegger video was an experimental work in progress. And it's part of a larger uh, project about the graffiti world in Malmö. So after screening the video in Lisbon last year, I began to consider how I could develop the project further. Being experimental, I didn't really have uh, much of a plan when, when I started doing the video. It was, uh, I just thought it would be fun to do and interesting to do. Uh, 
So that's, that's how I got started. Um, and when I started thinking about it, I, I came back to my own place in the hierarchy of the graffiti environment in, in Malmö. So those of us who study uh, graffiti and street art, uh, we often uh, end up following practitioners around. Sometimes we do this directly by doing go-alongs, going along with, with, uh, with, with the uh, practitioners as they create work. Sometimes we do it uh, with a delay as we move through space, looking for traces of uh, the practices. Um, and the video tracing Kegger, uh, which I screened last year, is a, is a visual manifestation of, of such a search where I'm going around looking for traces of uh, a particular writer. And of course, sometimes we try to retrace uh, their steps through arch archival sources, or these days we may simply follow practitioners on social media and so be exposed to, to what they're doing. But it's it seems to me that it's always us following them. Um, so both on social media platforms like Instagram and in the physical world, chroniclers and researchers follow graffiti writers. If not in person, uh, by conducting go-alongs, then by seeking out the traces that they leave behind. And so when I was thinking about how to develop this project further, I began to ask myself, what if I could reverse uh, these roles? What if I could turn the tables and instead of following uh, the graffiti writers around, what if I could get them to follow me? And I don't just mean on social media because this was already happening. I, I already had a following uh, of graffiti writers, local graffiti writers uh, on social media, on Instagram particularly. Um, but I was also thinking about having them follow me in physical space. Uh, and thereby perhaps being able to engage with the world of graffiti writing in a new way. And so to this end, uh, and partly inspired by my previous studies of urban art collectors, I came up with the idea of first creating something that I thought local graffiti writers and, gra and graffiti enthusiasts might be interested in, and then taking that object uh, and placing it in uh, urban space. And so based on uh, the video that I screened last year, I actually created a graffiti scene, which is also called Trace and Kegger. And I'll just get a copy of it. I forgot to bring it to the table just a second. So this is the scene I created um, for, uh, as, uh, as an object. And um, it contains uh, stills from the 26 minute video uh, that I screened last year. And it also contains a map of uh, the area where the video was filmed and a QR code uh, that leads uh, to the full video on YouTube. So if you find one of these on the street, then you uh, can, can, can follow and see the, the, the video. Um, the cover, uh, as you can perhaps see, is, is hand stenciled. You may not be able to see it here, but it's also hand sewn. So, so the, the scene is, is, is completely handmade. And then it's numbered out of 50. So there are 50 copies of this scene in existence. And the intention of the limited nature of the scene was to make it more desirable uh, to local graffiti writers and to uh, graffiti enthusiasts. Um, so once these scenes had been made, I began to place them around Malmö and I started posting clues about the locations on Instagram. Um, thereby, I was hoping to encourage my existing followers on Instagram to go and find these scenes uh, and thereby reversing our usual roles and having them follow in my tracks for a change. Um, and the whole project really started out as a bit of fun, just like the video that I presented last year. But I also think of it as an experiment uh, that from a research perspective may yield some interesting insights. Although I have to admit that it's not quite, quite clear to me at this moment in time, what these insights are, uh, such as the nature of experimentation. I'm writing about it at the moment and I don't have any clear um, uh, conclusions about what, what this uh, leads to yet. So the clues for the different scenes that have been placed in Malmö so far are all available on my Instagram account, uh, which is just at Peter Bengtsson. Um, and I've also just finalized a short video that gives some insight into the project. And I would very much like to screen that for you now. 
Um, I didn't want to risk having problems with uh, the streaming and the sound on Zoom, so instead I've uploaded the video to uh, YouTube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link in the chat to uh, the video in just a moment. And uh, once I've posted it, um, I would ask you to go and watch it on your computers individually. Once everybody has watched it, the video is nine minutes and 15 seconds, then I would like to uh, discuss uh, with you the project and uh, see if you have any comments or, or questions. I am uh, partly a graffiti writer, but I'm also a chronicler uh, yeah. by doing a podcast. Uh, and um, I reacted to uh, uh, what, what they told you in the panel that chroniclers are at the bottom of the hierarchy. Mm. Uh, this surprises me uh, as, I mean, if you would look at uh, persons like uh, uh, Chalfant or Prigov that will be on later today, uh, or, or people who run huge uh, YouTube or Instagram accounts, they have uh, uh, great powers that, that come with that. Yeah, and thusly a responsibility too. So, um, I think I, have, I think I don't have a question to attach to it. No, but it's but, I, but it, it's it's interesting. But I think I think there are different tiers of of chroniclers, right? There are, there are people uh, who are who are legend legendary chroniclers and and sure. who get a lot of respect, whereas uh, people like me, uh, most people in the graffiti world. Uh, don't know me. They may be following me on Instagram, but they don't know the person behind the account. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm relatively new to it as well. I mean, I I really started uh, documenting uh, graffiti uh, like purposefully in 2013 in Malmö. Mm -hmm. I thought I did it earlier. I'm writing a text right now where I, where I I actually thought I started in 2010, but I went back uh, in my archive and I realized I have photographed stuff earlier than 2013, but I didn't go out of my way to photograph graffiti. The graffiti I photographed before 2013 was stuff that I would meet um, uh, in, in the area where I, where I lived or on my way to work. Mm -hmm. uh, so Pegu Zidana or uh, yeah. train graffiti uh, mm -hmm. that, I, that I saw at the station or, or when trains were passing by. Um, so, so, so I'm relatively new uh, in, in in that sense. I haven't been been documenting it since the uh, since the 80s, right? Well, the subject is fascinating. So, um, and and I think we could, uh, regardless if you can use it for research or not, it would be fun to talk about. As I, I mean, I've been writing graffiti for 30 years, but I've been chronicling for two years, and and I also keep those two identities separated. Yeah. But I would say that my role as a, as a chronicler. Uh, is held in in higher regards in in terms of uh, hierarchy. Yeah. So yeah, just wanted to get that in there. Uh, yeah, nice presentation. Thanks. That, that, that's that, that that's very interesting. I, I would be very happy to 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 speak more with you about this. Obviously. Yeah. Cheers. I don't know. Uh, I don't know who was first. Uh, Chris. I I don't know who. Um. I that was really great, Peter. Nice one. I'm really interested in this sense of play that is imparted through this kind of work that you're doing in this methodology and like more again probably a comment than it is a question but as you know we've been together at conferences with Pedro and uh, this group in the past and Lachlan McDowell has presented some interesting methodological kind of innovations of how you know, this kind of research and stuff can be legitimized. What role do you reckon there is within what you're doing and really sort of embedding that sense of play into things and embedding, I guess, kind of some strategies and tactics that might be consistent with the culture of more graph than street art into research like and you know and i get that you've not completed this but yeah i feel like it's fruitful ground for development yeah well th this is th th this is part of what i'm doing now so so what this is a, has become a part of is uh, a methodological study uh, which focuses on uh, how to approach and how to understand 
uh, the graffiti world of Malmö as an outsider because I'm not a I'm not a uh, graffiti writer. I'm not even Swedish. Uh, so so I'm I'm in many ways I'm an outsider to to the graffiti world here. So I'm I'm looking at uh, visual methodologies uh, mostly uh, as an approach to understanding a world that I come to as a complete outsider. Uh, and uh, th th this is what I'm what I'm writing about at the moment. And in the context of of uh, of that uh, verbal work, I have already begun to integrate uh, the video that I presented last year. Um, and I, I haven't finished that chapter yet, but I'm I'm writing about how uh, how you can communicate a sense of uh, connectedness between tags and a sense of the process, both of, of tagging as I imagine it, but also uh, a sense of exploring the tags as a researcher uh, through the medium of, of video, through videography. There are some comments on the chat and uh, I think Jacob have a reflection. Jacob? Yes, if there is time. Yes, there is. So let me take away. Thank you, Peter. It was super, super interesting and, and fun. I was just reflecting on, on, since I was a part of the panel when, when this came up also, and I think I might have been part, I would say that the hierarchy between, uh, as, and as you pointed out, there's different tiers, uh, tiers of, of, of uh, but I would also say that the chronicler versus the writer in the most stereotypical way at least also are different scales or different systems in a way that mm -hmm. and they are also built around different types of stereotypical male ro uh, models or, or something like that but I, I thought it was so uh, to some extent what you are doing here is very typical of, of the chronicling methods. I would say that the, 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 the Swedish database and, and news media, uh, Gotekonst.se, now dysfunct, they for several years had this, what they call the Kladvens calendar, which they had a, a hunt for, for street art pieces around Stockholm in, 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 in relation to Christmas. So it was like a calendar before Christmas. So that's but it also seems that what, what you are doing here is also getting into artistic research and, and what you're doing is not that far away from what uh, Keger's companion Adams have been doing, hiding mm -hmm. stuff in libraries, et cetera. So it's interesting that it's also, you are by, try, you are also transgressing the traditional role of the chronicler uh, in this sense and, and more getting into a kind of post medium street art graffiti context. It was more a reflection. Have you have you thought about this? You you switched the scale to some extent in order to become followed. Yes, that 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 was. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm saying now that that was the purpose, but uh, but really, I don't know if that was the purpose from the beginning. Like when I did the scene. I think I just when when I first made the scene, it was it was just a way to develop the the um, to develop the material I presented last year, and then I had just uh, <laughs> through urban creativity, I I had gotten into stenciling a little bit, so 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 it was it was just a way of, of, of sort of having fun during the summer, actually. But 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 yeah, I mean, subsequently, I, I, it, it it became you know obvious to me that that I am sort of I have been very interested recently in Adams and Kegger uh, and AK and, and, and that whole group, uh, Brad Downey as well. Um, and I guess it wasn't my intention, but I guess I'm sort of emulating uh, some, of the, some of the things that they have done in the past. Uh, but but I'm, I'm trying to, to put it into a, a research context, which, which I know Adams is, is, is also doing. He says, well, yeah, and then, but in an artistic research, context which is different from our traditional academic research context yeah but I, what uh, uh, did i uh, did did you interpret this first comment uh, passively aggressively as i did as well this kind of like uh, 
uh, yeah. the ab about the chroniclers or yeah and the, the, no in your video the the who the one who who's that you showed the uh, uh, the tracing Peter Bia. Um, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, okay. He, I, I, I've had more correspondence with this okay. with this person, um, and uh, he, uh, I, I, I don't know how many scenes he found, but I think that he found quite a few, um, I, at least two, as far as I know. Um, and uh, no, I, I don't think that it's uh, that it's passive aggressive. I think that he, uh, we, we had some discussions about it, and and I was actually asked if he, if I was okay with him, sort of uh taking over or or uh, appropriating the project and i said sure i mean uh, I, I put it out there and, and you can do what you want with it so mm -hmm. um i don't think that it was passive aggressive uh and and i also think that the the video clip that he posted with uh with, with sound on uh where he's looking at me in the car obviously that's not me mm -hmm. um i think is 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 really funny yeah. Um, so, so, so I, I don't think that there was any animosity or, or passive aggressiveness there. Uh, okay. I don't think because that 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 could have been an example of the kind of hierarchy and system that, because I, I think that, that I, I mean, the hierarchy. I, I interviewed for my thesis, but I never published that chapter. Fourteen different people, in-depth interviews, uh, who were known as chroniclers. And, and they were quite famous in the respective contexts. Uh, and they were s the most common, uh, I, it was only one person who rejected being interviewed, who had a problem with being a chronicler. Uh, but all of, most, the most common uh, reaction was, finally somebody taking me serious. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, really like, because they, they were, they were highly appreciated uh, in their respective context, but kind of taken for granted. Uh, and that's what was a part of the, the hierarchy, I think. Uh, and and they, even if, if writers liked, I mean, liked what they were doing and uh, uh, liked being admired, liked being collected, they were still, and liked also that they sometimes had photos of their, of, of their work. They took them the, that kind of service for granted right. that they should be happy, yeah. and that's an example of that kind of you know, hierarchy that you experienced in the in the panel, perhaps. But but I, but I have to say that I mean the panel was one thing, but in my daily life, uh, when I post stuff on Instagram, I often get requests from 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 people, especially when I post videos of trains passing by. I've gotten quite a lot of requests from people who uh, who has a piece on the train and, and would like me to send the video, and they're always very polite and 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 seem grateful. So so, so there's a discrepancy between what was going on in the panel mm -hmm. and 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 what I actually experience um, in everyday life. But it, it's still sort of that experience still sort of triggered something in me that I, that I wanted to challenge. And I, I think that it has led to something uh, productive. So, so, so I'm, I'm very glad that, uh, that this uh, writer said uh, what he said. <laughs> Thank you. You have a question, uh, one more maybe from Parajita. I don't know if she, if, she, if she wants to give it in her own voice. Hi, I was just saying that it seemed like after that incident where uh, it was established that a researcher or a chronic chronicler is at the bottom of the hierarchy, it kind of pushed you to become um, an artist in a way because of the in intervention that you kind of took on. And that was an attempt to kind of change this hierarchy in some way, which I which was kind of answered in this previous discussion as well. So that's mm. all I was asking. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, yes, that's, uh, that sounds like great, yeah. Anna, I don't know if you want to add something, you. Well, it was just a, a question. Um, it's a great video um, and I, I love the experimental nature of this academic work that you're doing, but I'm, I'm wondering if you, I, I see it as knowledge mobilization and I'm just wondering if you see it as knowledge mobilization. I don't this know what that is. 
What what is knowledge mobilization? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's a term. Uh, maybe it's an educational term. I'm so sorry. So it's a term we're using in Canada um, to talk about where we can take knowledge um, that comes from uh, research and bring it to people that are, aren't researchers. Right, so, right, right. Okay, yeah. So yes. it's also called knowledge transference. I use knowledge mobilization. So when I was watching your video, I felt mm -hmm. you know you're bringing. Um, there's so many different aspects, obviously, that we could discuss, but I also saw that you're bringing this um, research that you're doing to other people that aren't uh, necessarily in academia and wouldn't know about this research unless you created a video such as you have. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, that, that is, uh, I mean, in, in everything I do, uh, I I try to be, I'm very inspired by Howard Becker and his uh, thoughts about writing uh, that you should try to con convey complex ideas in uh, as simple a way as possible without losing nuance. Um, so I try to, to do that in my writing, but I also think that uh, moving images, also photos really, but, but, but especially moving images uh, has a way of, of um, uh, they're evocative in a different way than, than, than verbal communication. Um, and I, th I, I really like experimenting with this and trying to, to reach uh, different audiences. So, so absolutely, this is something that, um, that, 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 that I'm focused on. Um, I didn't uh, know the term, but now I do uh, for what it was I was, <laughs> I was trying to accomplish. Thanks.